and foraging coming to you from a beautiful Minneapolis park. Now many of you know that I live in Minneapolis and it's berry season here right now so I thought I would do a bike tour around the city and show you some of my favorite summer berries. Uh, before I get into the video though just want to say thanks for watching. If you like the video please hit the like button subscribe to my channel and ring the bell for notifications. I really appreciate it. So in this video I'm going to be going over a few different berry species. So I'm going to be going less in depth on each species than I do in some of my other videos. So there'll be less detailed information about identification and harvesting and preparation, but this should still be a great jumping off point for all you folks who are interested in experiencing the abundance of summer berries. So let's get to it. Let's go see what we can find. I was just biking down the road here and noticed a small berry as I was biking by. Thought I would come point it out. Mulberry is a tree, sometimes it's a smaller tree like this, but they do actually get really big. And they produce these little, usually dark purple berries. There's also a variety that makes white mulberries, but those are less common to find. But the telltale giveaway is the purple staining on the ground. So the berries just fall really readily and you can see back there just the sidewalk is like totally purple right now. So that's really easy to see from a distance. And this is the berry when ripe. Very tasty. It's very staining. After picking a few of these your hands will definitely turn purple. It's kind of a watery berry which some people don't like but I think it's pretty good and it's great for things that want moisture anyway like sauces or crumbles or macerations so I like it for that kind of thing or just eating it plain and you do want to be careful when you're harvesting it this is a tree that likes to grow anywhere and you don't want to get too close to a roadside so I probably wouldn't actually pick the berries here because it's a pretty busy intersection, but you can find it growing in yards and parks and really a lot of places because birds eat the berries and spread them all over and they grow really readily. And usually you want to ask permission if you're picking it from private property, but usually people are fine with you picking it because, oh, there's some birds right now. <laughs> usually people are fine with you picking it because it is so staining. People usually don't like that. So. What you're looking for in the mulberry also is these irregularly lobed leaves. They, in general, kind of look like mittens and they're serrated, but they have different shapes. So some of them might have less lobes and some of them might have more. And I'll show you some other leaves as well. Here's a good view of the leaves and you can see what I mean by the variation and the lobing. Like this leaf here has like one, two, three, four, five, six lobes. And some of them might just have two or three. And this is really distinctive of the white mulberry. So even though this mulberry actually has red slash purple fruits on it, it is a white mulberry. And you can get a pretty good view of the berries here. This is what they look like when ripe. A bit like a raspberry in appearance, but more oblong in shape and of course more of a purple color. And then here are the unripe ones. So the white ones, when they ripen, they'll look more like this, except they'll be plumper and you'll be able to tell that they're ripe because of how plump and juicy they are.
behind me is a Juneberry. They're also called Saskatoons, Service Berries. They have many different names, but they all refer to this genus of berries. And they are super delicious. They're definitely one of my top favorite berries of all time. And luckily, they are a popular landscaping plant. So they're super easy to find in yards, parks, gardens, public landscapes, all sorts of places like that. You can probably see it has loads of berries on it right now. Prime berries. And the ones that are ripe are the purplish ones. Probably that there's some red ones on here too. Those aren't quite ripe yet. The darker purple or like bluish that they get, the more ripe they are. So they should come off of the branch really easily if they're ripe. And they're really sweet in flavor. The seed has, uh, if you crunch through it, it has an almond flavor to it, which I kind of like. So Juneberries look a bit like blueberries. They are a similar size and color and they have that little five-pointed star at the bottom. And you can use them like blueberries in recipes, even though they do taste a little different. They're a bit sweeter and the seed, like I said, has an almondy flavor. So Juneberries grow as a shrub or a small tree. And the bark is pretty distinctive. It has this gray bark with vertical striations and if you look at the leaves they're small oval leaves with serrated edges and they're alternate on the stalk and then here's a close-up of the berries and underneath you can see that five-pointed star I was talking about those are the sepals and Juneberries are part of the rose family. So in spring, you will see these with beautiful five petaled white flowers on them. And they're quite showy at that time of year. And it's a good time to pick them out of the landscape and mark them for later in the year when the berries will be ripe. And here's a close up of the berries. You can see that these ones here are not ripe yet. They're still more of a pink or red in color. But these ones that are more of a purple or a dark blue are ripe. And like I said, they should just pop off really easily. And there's that little star. I just wanted to point out these June berries growing here because this is a little different in form than the tree I showed you earlier, this is more shrub-like, whereas what I showed you earlier was more like a small tree. But you can see that still it has the berries with the five-pointed star on the bottom that start off kind of a pinkish-reddish and then turn like a dark blue or purple and ripe. And you can also see these oval leaves with the fine serrations on them. And then of course, it still has the gray bark with the vertical striations. right next to me on this hill we have black raspberry plants now of course raspberries are favorite fruit among many people and they're easy to identify once the berries come out so even though these are still green and immature you can probably tell it's some kind of raspberry or blackberry but I'll give you a few tips to be able to tell apart the red raspberries black raspberries and blackberries which of course they're all edible so if you happen to confuse them it's not a big deal and if you like the taste then it doesn't really matter 
but if you're a plant nerd like me, you might want to know how to tell the difference without the need of the ripe berries. So the first thing to look at when trying to identify a raspberry or blackberry is the leaves, assuming that you don't have the berries there. Blackberry leaves are always palmately compound, which means that the leaves come out like fingers from a palm. There'll be usually five leaves, sometimes seven, but usually five coming out from one central point. So you can tell right away that these are not blackberries because they have only three leaflets per leaf and they are not all palmately compound. Most of these are what's called pinnately compound. So this whole thing here is actually one leaf and these are leaflets. And black raspberries always have three leaflets on each leaf. Whereas red raspberries sometimes have three and sometimes have five. So especially the leaves coming off lower on the stem, red raspberry will have five leaflets. But if you look through here, I don't see a single compound leaf with five leaflets. So that's a tip that it's black raspberry. I also know it's black raspberry because I picked here a bunch before. <laughs> But, <laughs> assuming you haven't been in the area before and don't know, another thing to look for is the thorns on the stem. Black raspberry is more heavily thorned and the thorns are bigger. So on red raspberry, there won't be as many thorns on the stem and the thorns that are there are more needle-like rather than these kind of thick thorns. So those are the basics of how you tell apart red raspberry, black raspberry, and blackberry. And all of them produce white five-petaled flowers. So like I was saying with Juneberry, spring is a good time to look for these because the flowers will be showy and they'll stand out amongst the green vegetation and then you'll know where to come back later in the year to pick and eat them. Next to me here is a choke cherry. Now, when you hear the name choke cherry, you might assume it's poisonous, that it chokes you, or that tastes really bad. The reason it's called choke cherry is because the berries are very astringent. So if you just eat them raw, it's a bit like a feeling of having wadded up toilet paper in your mouth. It just kind of sucks all the moisture out of your mouth. But if you dry them and make fruit leather, or if you turn it into a syrup or a sauce they're, or a jam or jelly, they're really good that way. So not the best fruit to eat straight off the tree, but definitely something that's good when processed. And since it does have that astringent quality, you want to make sure to get the berries as ripe as possible. Obviously these berries here are not ripe, they're still green. There's a few on here that are like a dark red, but you want them to be really, really dark red slash purple, like almost black in color when you pick them. And they should have some give to them when you squish them. So right now if I squish these, they just like basically feel as hard as rocks. They should have some give to them and that'll be an indication that they're very ripe. Because definitely with choke cherry, the riper you get it, the better. Now choke cherry does have a few lookalikes. It can be mistaken for other cherries. Of course, all cherries are edible, so if you do mistake it for a different cherry species, it's not the biggest deal. Uh, the one you're most likely to mistake it for is black cherry, which has a similar color cherries and also has these cherries that grow 
kind of like grapes where there's one main stem and then a bunch of little stems coming off the main stem with the cherries on it. But black cherry grows as a tall tree and it's usually found in forests or on forest edges. And whereas this is a small tree or a shrub and black cherry, when it's mature and fully grown, the bark is scaly and looks like, people have said looks like burnt potato chips. So that is a very distinctive characteristic of black cherry. The plant you want to be more careful about is buckthorn, which is poisonous. If you eat the berries, it will cause vomiting. So you definitely want to avoid that. Buckthorn doesn't have the fruits that grow in a grape-like pattern like this. The fruits come directly out of the axils where the leaf stem and the main stem meet. So they'll be coming out in little tight bunches, not in elongated clusters like this. The leaves of buckthorn are also much shorter and more rounded than that of black cherry. Choke cherry leaves are long and oval and pretty wide across and they have these fine serrations along the leaf. If you look at black cherry leaves, they are much narrower than this, but they do have the same fine serrations. Here's a close-up of the berries. So you can see what I mean when I say it grows in a long grape-like cluster where there's one main stem and then the berries all come off on the sides little side stems and this year these are the closest to ripe but they're still not ripe yet that won't be for another few weeks and here is a close-up of the leaf so you can see the serrations along the edge and you can see that it's fairly broad across maybe three or four inches and it's broadest at the middle or just below the middle and then if we look at the bark, this is really common on cherries and other species in the rose family too, actually. You'll find these little, they're called lenticels. They're just little pores that help the tree breathe. That concludes my video about summer berries. Thanks so much for joining me today. I appreciate your time. If you like the video, please hit the like button subscribe to my channel and ring the bell for notifications. It's a great way to help me out for free. But if you do have a few extra dollars a month, please consider joining me on Patreon. You can make a monthly pledge and get some cool benefits in return. And it helps me keep producing these free informative videos that you all enjoy. So the link is in the description below. If you can do that, that'd be great. Otherwise, carry on and happy foraging.